pedicle lengthening osteotomy. So it's a technology that actually um, I saw about 15 years ago and it speaks to how hard sometimes uh, you have to struggle before it becomes to the market. I will say that it's probably one of the most fascinating things I've seen. I think as far as IP and just innovation, I think it's amazing. This was actually invented by one of our colleagues, uh, Dr. Greg Anderson at, at Jefferson. And I honestly saw this about 15 years ago, so he's been at it for an incredibly long time. Right? Yeah. So um, it's not an FDA approved procedure. Um, hopefully we'll be a site at Cedar sinai uh, Looks like they're gonna go through some study revisions, but I'm looking forward to being a part of this trial. The problem, spinal stenosis, so common. We treat this all the time. It's probably one of the best operations that we have is just a surgical micro decompression or laminectomy, laminotomy. Um, but even in this pa patient population, it's how do we make this better? And so we've seen a lot of, I would say, less invasive or minimally invasive options, whether that is interspinous based or even in indirect decompression. I've seen a lot of patients do X lift for indirect decompression. And so there's still a lot of treatment um, that we can do. So this is the idea, and this is the innovation. It's pretty fascinating. It's almost a laminoplasty for the lumbar spine, but it's done percutaneously, minimally invasively. And when I think about this, I think that I could do this awake, for sure. I don't know if Mike Wong is still here. But the idea is, is to basically lengthen the pedicle and create more space for the canal. So this is the before. You can see the after. And here's the change, okay? And so you get a significant change. And we know that stenosis is a threshold disease. And so if you can impart change, you can probably impact the symptoms greatly. And here is the demonstration. So it's very simple. It's percutaneous. And I would say in the last 15 years, percutaneous pedicle fixation or accessing the pedicle is become common. Fellows are trained, everybody's doing it. So I think this technology is even more relevant now than it was 15 years ago. But you use an allies view, you put a reamer, you basically cut the base of the pedicle, and then you lengthen it. This is a very elegant tool. This is kind of the one and all tool that does most of the work for you. It accesses the pedicle. And then you're able to deploy a blade, okay? And you can lengthen that blade by fine tuning it. You can rotate that blade 360 degrees and actually cut the pedicle with some tactile feedback. This is the screw. So it's very similar to a pedicle screw. But instead of, you know, when we see the heads, it's polyaxial where that dorsal nut is. When you turn that part of the screw, it basically distracts across those two segments. And this is how you get your lengthening. Probably very similar to lengthening rods now. And what we're seeing now in trauma, when we're doing limb lengthening, where they do a circumferential cut around the femur, lengthen the femur, and then get um, healing of the bone. So this is a biomechanical demonstration of just the kinematics. Obviously, if you put an inner spinous spacer in, the segment's more stiff. If you do a laminectomy, the segment's a little bit more unstable. And I think we often have to choose what to do more when we're in the face of spondylolisthesis. Does that instability promote more stenosis in the future? And should we fuse that patient? Where this is an operation that really kind of is very equal to the intact spine. If you look at what it does, when you lengthen the pedicle by millimeter by millimeter, so if you're lengthening the pedicle by four millimeters, you can decrease the canal pressure by 70 to 100 percent. Okay, so it's incredible kind of change of area, has a great impact on the pressure. Now, he started this, and I wish, he, um, I, wish I had the year, but I think this was published six years ago. It's a 20 patient study. Okay, he brought this out to Russia and basically did a 20 patient pilot study on these patients, followed these patients out for five years. So this is five year follow up and you can see how durable this procedure is. So an ODI decrease of about 70%, the Zurich claudication score decrease again of about 50%, but look at the VAS for leg pain from seven to two. So seven to two, about 60% decrease all the way out to five years. So a very durable procedure. Here's just an example of canal expansion. It's about 115% of canal expansion that you get 
because you know it's really a volumetric increase. So you increase the pedicle, you increase not only just the surface area, but the volume. Now, from the pilot study of 20 patients, there are no dural tears, no nerve root injuries, no neurologic worsening, no infections, no clinically significant bleeding, no subsidence migration or, or breakage, and most of all, at the six-month CT mark, all the pedicle osteotomies have healed. So if you think about it, it's a great place for healing. You know, you probably don't disrupt the periosteum so much. You're really not disrupting any of the vasculature around the pedicle. You basically separate the pedicle, it can sell its bone, and then it demonstrates an excellent chance or excellent healing potential. So this is the inclusion for the IDE study. It's really the same patient that's involved in most IDE studies, less than grade one spondy, one or two levels. This is an example, four or five spondy with stenosis. And here you'd lengthen both, not only the L4 pedicle, but the L5 pedicle. This is what it looks like. And this is kind of the surgical demonstration. You find the angle, it's the on foss owl eye view. You do this percutaneously. You identify the pedicles. You make about a 12 to 14 millimeter incision. You then cannulate the pedicle. This is the reamer, and this is where you're going to deploy the saw under fluoroscopic visualization right at the base of the pedicle. Then you turn, you use this device, you basically deploy the saw and slowly cut the base of the pedicle. Here you can see the saw blade. And then finally insertion of the screw. And then the distraction of about four millimeters. Here it's done at the L4 and the L5 level. And the procedure is done, okay? And so this is a true, I believe, is kind of a Band-Aid approach. You put a Band-Aid to suture the skin, let the patient walk early. It's basically uh, no bending and twisting for about six weeks. You've got direct fixation of the pedicle. And so in the pilot study, this is just an example of the CT scan at six months uh, of a healing osteotomy site. And they had 100% healing of the osteotomy site. So I think that the benefits are very well demonstrated. You're really treating the problem. It's a direct decompression, but done minimally invasively. Thank you very much.